While brands like Opel and Ford leaving the smallest car segment and others like Volkswagen only offering electric cars in this segment, Hyundai with the i10 still offer petrol cars. And with this, welcome to Lisbon and the presentation of the new i10. And today we drive that car with the smallest engine on board to see how it drives and what else the newest version delivers. There are two engines available for the new i10. The smaller one is a one liter three cylinder petrol engine and that offers 67 horsepower. The bigger one is a 1.2 liter four cylinder petrol engine that offers 84 horsepower. Important here is both the small and the big one. They come with a five speed manual gearbox or a five speed automatic gearbox and all of the i10, they are front wheel powered. My test car is featuring the smaller of the two engines, which is the one liter three cylinder petrol, and that offers um, 67 horsepower and 96 newton meters of maximum torque. And it is combined uh, with a five speed manual gearbox. That package, yeah, it works well as long as you drive in the city, as long as you drive easy. Um, but if you want to go on a motorway a bit more quicker, if you want to drive, yeah, let's say a bit more sporty, uh, you may over want to overtake on the, uh, when you're driving a countryside road, then this really is not sufficient. And you may hear this, it is a typical three-cylinder sound, but not this crisp sound. So it's more the easy thing you get with that car. Um, I think if you, a person who would like to drive a bit more dynamic, you then better choose the 1.2 liter, which is a bit more powerful and which gives you the extra bit of torque to give you yeah, more fun driving the car. But I said, as long as you drive easy, that's a nice package. And I think the consumption is also very okay. Um, we used a bit more than uh, Hyundai says, but our car takes during our test drive about 5.4, 5.5 liters per hundred kilometer driven. So I think that's an absolutely fine figure. The weather actually doesn't work very well. So I use these binoculars not only to look for better weather, but also to have a closer look to the design of the new i10. At 1 meter 68 in width, the new i10 is around 2 centimeters wider than its predecessor. Thanks to the new wider grille and the additional side air intakes, it looks much sportier. The new round LED daytime running lights with honeycomb structure are also a real eye-catcher. The strong contours of the bonnet which extends into the bumper provide additional power. The base model of the i10 comes with halogen headlights. The top version offers halogen headlights with projection technology which should provide better illumination. Aluminium wheels up to 16 inches on the side ensure the right appearance. The i10 did not really grow in length with 3,67 m, but its wheelbase increased by 4 cm to 2,43 m. In connection with the reduced height of the vehicle by 2 cm, this creates a completely new and more dynamic shape. The new look is supported by the window graphics, the tinted rear side windows and the partly black X-shaped C-pillar. In addition to 10 different exterior colors, a two-tone roof in black or red extends the customization options of the i10, which is always delivered as a five-door model. The rear is dominated by the striking rear lights. Their shape is adopted by two horizontal lines on the trunk lid. As at the front, there is no LED technology in the rear lights either. In addition to the side reflectors in the bumper, there is also a black rear diffuser for a slightly more sporty look. The base model of the i10 costs 10,990 euros in Germany and then you will have the car with the smallest, the one liter, three cylinder petrol engine with 67 horsepower and a five speed manual gearbox. Of course, you can buy higher trim levels. The next one will cost you about 3,000 euros extra. Um, and of course you can, yeah, put extras inside of your car as you used to with a configurator online, for instance, or at your dealership. But important here is you can't choose single things. You have to buy packages like the navigation package, which costs you in Germany 1,250 euros, or the comfort uh, package, which costs you 500 euros. Uh, the problem on this is you do then, when you take the box, buy and pay things you may don't want to have, like the um, uh, traffic sign recognition, which is part of the navigation uh, system. But Nevertheless, let's have a look how much the competitors of that car cost you in our market.
A 72 horsepower Toyota Aigo costs from 10,390 euros in Germany. For the new with 64 horsepower equipped Twingo, Renault asked exactly for the same amount. If you prefer to drive a Volkswagen, you have to buy the 12,960 euro up and be satisfied with a 60 horsepower petrol engine. You can order your i10 in four different trim levels, which are pure select trend and style. And pure really is a pure car, because then the i10 only comes with extras like an adjustable steering wheel and electric um, windows at the front. If you want a bit more, you choose the next higher level. And then you will get things like a digital radio, you will find a climate system on board, and a lot more to feel comfortable in your car. But if you then use the next highest level, then you really can talk about a very well-equipped car because then that car features, um, for instance, the eight-inch touchscreen here for the infotainment, which really works very nice. And it is, in principle, the same system you do find in higher cars like the Hyundai i30, but it is differently integrated because this here is combined with the um, instrument cluster, so with the cockpit, and that really makes it look a bit more, yeah, a bit better fitted in the car. And I think a bit higher class. If you really put everything inside your i10 you can order, then the car get a bit of yeah, a luxurious, very small car. Because what I just found out here, the center console, you can not only control the heated seats, you can also control the heated steering wheel. The cockpit looks quite large in the small car. The two circular instruments are easy to read and flank the display of the onboard computer. The steering wheel has all the necessary controls for checking the infotainment and cruise control and looks organized. The honeycomb pattern found on the door panels and the center console creates a unique look and enhances the interior. Regarding to the driver assistance safety system, the i10 is really well equipped. So as standard, every i10 is featuring a speed limiter and a cruise control system. It is featuring a high beam assist. It is featuring a active lane assist system and I think most important a front collision warning system with an automatic emergency brake. And this system not only recognizes other cars, it also recognizes pedestrians. The navigation package includes the Blue Link telematic system developed by Hyundai. In addition to live services such as traffic and weather reports, it also offers the option of an app, for instance to locate the vehicle or find parking spaces and check petrol prices. The space the i10 offers for the driver and co-driver is more than sufficient. I really do sit comfortably in the car, I do have enough space for my shoulders, elbows and as you see I have hat space left. Um, the only downside is that you can only adjust the steering wheel up and down. You can't pull it towards yourself, which is not very nice if you're a tall person like I am. But the rest is really more than comfortable. And we're still talking about a very small car. And on top of the seats, they do offer, I would say, enough comfort and more than enough um, support for this type of a car. When we talk about the rear seats, when I just sit at the front, nobody can sit behind me. Maybe a newborn one, but nobody else. But this is absolutely normal for this size of a car. But I think if you're a standard person at the front, you may have your kids at the rear seats, that should work. But forgive me, I will not try to enter the rear seat behind me. Talking about practicability, um, the i10 does feature as standard a uh, split it rear seat. You can fold so one side and then the other one. I really do like this a lot. When we talk about storage compartments, the car offers quite big uh, compartments here at the doors and another one here, which is the door handle, which is closed. But this is another compartment. On top of this, you do find in the center console this space down here, which is the optional uh, wireless charging point. And um, in the center console, you do find two small cup holders and a small um, uh, compartment aside of the handbrake. On top of this, you do find the uh, standard glove box and another compartment above it. And I really think for this size of the car, this is more than enough space to store your stuff in the car. Depending on the trim level you order, the new i10 now comes with a variable floor for your boot. 
And when we talk about the size, that car features with the rear seats up 252 liters. And when you fold down the rear bench, that increases up to 1,050 liters as maximum. But now let's have a closer look what the competitors will offer here. The Volkswagen Up comes very close to the i10 with a loading volume of 251 to 959 liters. The Renault Twingo offers 219 to 980 liters and the Toyota Aigo comes last with 168 to 812 liters. Talking about brakes, steering, suspension. I think the i10 is doing a nice job here. So the suspension really works well. It is stiff enough without being yeah, uncomfortable and the car is not leaning too much into curves and we're talking about a very small car. Uh, when we talk about the brakes you can really use them, <laughs> it may sound stupid, but the way you expect. So for this kind of a car they are soft enough to provide you with enough comfort but they do break enough or the way you expect it when you push the pedal. Uh, when we talk about the steering that is quite precise but not too much to make the car nervous. So I think overall the package really works well for this size and um, type of a car. Now I'm driving a bit uphill and what you can hear is the three-cylinder engine and what you do feel if you drive the car is this is exactly the situation where you wish to have a bit more of power to make the whole drive, uh, let's say, more enjoyable. When we talk about the i10, we do talk about the smallest car segment and that means when we talk about the interior, it is loads and loads of plastic to find. So you do have plastic here, 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 even here. Um, the only thing that is no plastic, I think, are the seats and the steering wheel. But this is nothing unusual for this type of a car. I think more important is how it looks. And I really do have to say I like the look of this uh, interior. And what I really do like with it is, on one hand, the integration of this um, display here, because this is very nicely made. On the other side, I do like the front part here of the dashboard, which got a bit of a different surface. And that really makes, yeah, look this interior a bit more higher class. What I don't like so much is we do find loads of these glossy black parts and especially here at the um, at the set nav and this is some is a place where you have your fingers quite often and so this means you will have your fingerprints everywhere and I'm not a big fan of that that was my test drive with the new the smallest Hyundai which is the new i10 um, when we say the new car really works well regarding to the new dimensions because the flatter wider car with a longer wheel is not only works regarding to the design, it also works well regarding to the drive because the car now sits a bit more solid on the road. Talking about the engines, uh, we drove the one litre three cylinder petrol and that engine with its 67 horsepower really works well in the city. But if you want to drive uh, on countryside roads and you may overtake or if you want to drive on the motorway a bit more quicker, from, here, from then and there you may miss a bit of power. But it's a small engine, so if you want to do this more often, you may take the 1.2 litre. But I think the consumption of the small one is quite nice. Talking about the space of the car, yes, it is a very, very compact car. So a small car, and that means when I sit at the front seat, at the rear, there is no space at all. But I think for a standard person with kids on board, that car will work at least for a shorter trip. Um, regarding to the price, I think the sticker price is absolutely nice for the entrance model. And if you put about 3,000 euros on top, you will get the next trim level, which then features the most important things. Uh, regarding to the most important things, what I really like with the car is that it comes even with this base model with the most important driver assistance and safety systems, which are the front collision system and which is the lane assist. And this all works with this single camera up here. So something I really do like a lot. So I think overall, a very nice car and a lot more modern than its predecessor. <music>